Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day three of Supercross practice. We're starting to feel pretty comfy out there. We're getting used to Supercross suspension, getting the feel for a Supercross environment, and I think it's only fitting that on day three, we prioritize hitting a couple triples out there. We're back here at State Fair MX. This is the same place we came for day one of Supercross practice. If you guys watched that video, you would have seen me just kind of doubling around, doubling through all the rhythms, um, just getting used to everything, feeling it all out, which is exactly what we needed to do on day one. I did end up hitting the Supercross triples though, which I wasn't exactly planning on doing, so we got those out of the way already. But like I said, day three now, we're gonna prioritize doing some of those triples into the rhythm sections. If you guys watched day two of Supercross practice, we were out at Lake Elsinore, which is arguably a much more difficult and realistic Supercross track. And by the end of the day, I did start to get pretty comfortable and did start tripling into some of the tougher rhythms, which I was really stoked about. So I'm hoping that when we come back out here to the slightly easier track, it's gonna make those triples in that I wasn't doing before seem super easy. So day three, that's our goal. I think that's gonna be doable and that will be what I am focusing on today. If we knock those out of the way early, we might go man up and uh, try out the Supercross whoops. I hit the set yesterday at Lake Elsinore, but they were a little bit easier than the ones out here. These ones are a little bit more intimidating, so we'll see about that. But priority one, start doing some of those triples, knock out all the good rhythms. I went out there and did one warm up sesh just to get the body going and get the rhythms back down. So now we're gonna head out there for a little five lapper. We're gonna send out Jerry in front of me. This will be my first time actually doing like a moto out here. So interested to see how that's gonna go. But the plan is still the same. Just focus on doing some of those triples, getting a feel for the track and uh, just put five consecutive laps together. We're gonna head out there, do a uh, sight lap and then jump into the motos. <laughs>
How'd that go? <laughs> step on, step off right there, so sketchy. This triple over here is getting pretty hard to do too. I might hold off on motos for a couple more days. <laughs> that was good, that was good. By that last lap, like any time I would have a hard landing, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh geez. How are you feeling, J-Rob? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good, dude. You look fantastic. So <laughs> Thanks, good. dude. I'm feeling much better. We accomplished one of the goals. Got this front rhythm down. Um, not very consistently, to be honest, but at least we got the triple step on, step off, and then like wheel tap triple into the corner. So goal number one done. Now we got to get that back rhythm. So we got my goals for the day. What's J-Rob's goals for the day? Just uh, shred it. Do another, so I got to do a 15 plus one. Dude, I don't even understand how you do 15. I did and five laps, shot. Whisk up in the loves. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, we want that far rhythm. We're going triple, triple, double, double through it. I think that's the main line. That's what we want to accomplish this session. We already got the rest of the track out of the way. Then after that, maybe we'll think about attempting the whoops. They actually look not too bad, but uh, we'll take it section by section. So let's head out there, bust that one out. We're good. Yeah, the three is a little foggy. A little bit of a hunk of a. A little bit. Yeah, if you landed more front end down, you would have just fucking been fine. You know? All right, first one out of the way. Yeah, I'll go for it at least. Oh, of course. Okay. check i think everything is all right wrist hurts pretty good but uh i guess that's just part of it just came up a little short on that one and then just along for the ride after that definitely shaken up that was a little scary though um i guess the good thing in all of this is that i learned i can crash pretty hard and be okay so uh always a silver lining i guess i feel like it's important Ooh. I can't actually loosen that. Come on. Oh. Yeah, that actually hurts pretty bad. Somehow this lever moved too. Actually, I wonder if my whole bar has moved back. It's probably what happened actually, now that I think about it. All right, I guess we'll throw it on the stand, check it out. All right, never seen this happen before. Bars actually look like they're right where I like them, so I don't think the bars move.
baby? Yeah, I don't know. My wrist feels a little... Like you like kind of like stunned it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just like what, when it went sideways, it was like it was like kind of like you maybe like overextended it? Yeah, I don't know. I have like a... It almost like wore away my glove. I don't yeah. know if I hit it like on my... Yeah, like you break up or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just can't hold on super tight. Yeah, triples. Dude, I hit that inside rut and I thought I got a really good run. Turns out I did not. Yeah. Alrighty guys, well, emotions are uh, pretty high right now. Adrenaline is still going. That was kind of a gnarly one. Um, I got really, really lucky there at the end. It could have went much, much worse if I like got whiskey throttle and seat bounce the next one like I've seen some people do and then it's just over the bars flying through the air. Um, I got really lucky, almost rode that one out, um, but hey, we're good. The wrist is definitely a little sore. You guys saw like when I was trying to loosen up my levers and stuff, I couldn't, like I didn't have enough strength to uh, undo those bolts. And then like taking my boots off and taking my helmet off and stuff like that, it did hurt pretty bad. My front brake lever was actually pointing up and there was no dirt on it at all. So it's not like it hit the ground. I think what happened was when I made the impact, uh, my right hand like busted off the bars and hit my lever really hard. And that's what angled my lever upwards. I mean, that's the only explanation that I can think of that actually makes sense. So I think that's what happened. I think it's probably just like some bone bruising or something or just a little, just a little sprain. As scary and sketchy as it was, I'm glad to like get the first big one out of the way. It's always a really scary thing to think about and like it wasn't really that bad. Glad to get with the first one out of the way. We're not headed to the hospital. We're all right. But yeah, I felt like it was important for me to like get the bike fixed up and head back out there and just at least spin a couple laps just so I wasn't going into the holidays like completely scared and just remembering the crash and like how bad it sucked. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I went back out there, rolled around, hit a couple of the jumps just to like kind of face the fear of the crash and everything and get back into it so that Next time I go to the track, the last thing I did wasn't endo my brains out. So I went out there and did it. Um, the wrist was like, it could tolerate like half a lap and then it started to get pretty painful and uh, my grip was just loosening up. So I was nervous that if I like clipped a landing or something that it was gonna just completely let go of the bars. So we called it there. I think that was the right move. Um, we'll give it a couple days, let it heal up come back swinging and we'll uh, put it behind us and just keep on trucking, keep getting better. But yeah, you guys can say that you were here during Jaywalk's very first Supercross crash. So there you go. But anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna get home, get some ice on this thing. Yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. Peace out, we'll catch you in the next one. Later.